Okay, so welcome to my first impressions, not a review of the Helson Shockmaster 300. Now, this is a homage, obviously, for a Omega Seamaster 300 from the 60s. Maybe 50s, I'm not exactly closed on which exact reference that is. But I can tell you that it's something around uh, 165 uh, dot 01 uh, 025 or 024. One of these had a date, the other didn't. The most common one, from what I understand, did not have a date. And that's the one that I don't have. I have the date because that's the one I managed to find uh, in a local sale. I would get the no date, but I actually enjoy having the date because. Well, dates are pretty cool when you think about it, after all. Uh, I'll get the specs out of the way so I can talk freely about this without, you know, just talking about how, my, how big is it, how, how big in this and that. So, uh, diameter is 40.5 millimeter. Uh, height, width is 13.5 millimeter. The distance between the lugs is 20 millimeters, so it's uh, can you can put in many many different uh, types of straps because 20 millimeters is very common. And lug to lug, from here to here, it's 47 millimeters, so very wearable, um, very wearable indeed. Uh, the weight with a full length bracelet is 178 grams. A screw down crown has a domed sapphire crystal which is four four millimeter thick with the uh, AR coating inside the crystal it is available in black the dial black dark blue and white uh, the bezel has a sapphire inlay according to the shot this is everything is coming from the health zone website uh, has a sapphire inlay water resistant to 300 meters uh, which is uh, 1000 feet uh, dial hands and bezel coated with uh, Swiss Super Luminova C3, Vintage Loom, BGW9, I don't know what BGW9 is, but uh, I'm sorry for the sounds. Um, currently it's sold out on the, Helson, on the Helson website, but it will return in June, which is tomorrow, as of recording this uh, video. Let me just close this so it won't get the notifications again. Uh, the bracelet is 20 uh, x 18 millimeter, so it's 20 millimeters as we've learned from the lug width, and it tapers down to 18 millimeter uh, with solid end links and removable links. 18 millimeter double locking clasp. I'll show that to you in a in a few. And the movement, of course, is a 25 jewel. Swiss ETA ETA 2824-2 movement. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Now let's look at the watch. First, let me zoom out a little. By the way, I never read this book, so if it's a, if it's a good read, just let me know. So the bracelet, as I said just a second ago, is a, I had a push clasp. You can see here. No, it's actually this this one, and it opens. It's um, machined, everything looks good, feels very good, has a nice click to it, just very nice click. And it has a like a glide lock kind of thing. I can have a glide lock, but glide lock is very special in its place. Uh, you know, I won't say it's glide lock, but it has a like micro adjustment thing. You have how much spots? One. Wait. Okay, wait, this is full. Now one, two, three, four, five, I think. Ah, it's hard. It's hard. Now, what do I think about this watch? Well, I wanted this one quite a while uh, because I always wanted, you know, the OG Seamaster 300, but since it's unobtainable, pretty much, Unless you have deep, 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 deep pockets or, you know, like very big dealers. And you also have, like you have, you know, very good vintage dealers and you have very deep pockets. 
it's pretty much unobtainable for the you know the average uh, watch aficionado. So Helson came and gave us this. I know there are other uh, variants of uh, Borealis and another brand I forgot its name, which is also very good. But um, this is what I got. Um, I got it from someone who bought it and never used it and wore it, so it's pretty much in pristine condition. As you can see, the bracelet is spotless. The case is pretty much spotless. The edge is almost lined up, the hell's on the edge as you can see on the crown, but not uh, not completely. So what do I like about this watch? <sighs> well, what is there, what is there not to like about this watch? The hands, um, I believe, I don't know exactly what you call this type of hands. Um, but, I mean, it's not sword hands per se. They're very unique to the Seamaster 300 from the 60s that we know. Uh, I really love them because they're very legible. As you can see, the minute hand goes all the way to the end of the minute track. So, it's very legible. At any glance, you can tell the time. And for me, legibility is very important. The second sand also, I forgot the name of the style of the second sand, but it has like a, maybe a bomb or something. Very cool, very fitting of the, the entire uh, package here. And the Hauer hand is again very, very, like, it, it's exactly how it should be, like, in terms of uh, size and, um, um, like, how, how it blends in the overall package of the of the dial. Oh my god, I'm saying package too much. I said it two, two times already. The Helson logo is, um, well, it's there. I mean, I guess I prefer this logo over the something like, you know, San Martin or something like that, which is very, can be very cringy in a sense. Now, there are two variations of this uh, dial. There's one with the 12 that I have, and there's that one with the big triangle, which is also a uh, Something people like, they like the type of uh, big triangle I found on the 2254.50 Seamaster, the Peter Blake. Personally, I like the 12 and the 9 and the 6, which is currently covered by the minute hand. Um, the dial is very minimalistic. Helson Automatic Shockmaster 300, which I love. Um, this is made in Hong Kong, as far as I know, so no Swiss made here. Although you have Swiss parts, you have the Swiss uh, movement, the ETA ETA 2824-2. I think this watch uses a lot of vintage style, I mean vintage uh, feelings. Like, the bracelet does resemble the old style uh, bracelet from the Seamaster of old. Uh, it's very comfortable, let me show you a wrist chart. Just a second, I'll have to, fo to zoom out a little. Okay, it looks very big, so I'll zoom out a little. Um, as you see, it wears pro quite well on my 7-inch wrist. Now, one thing bad I have to say about the bracelet is the is the fact that I had to use a friend in order to resize it. Now, yes, it's that bad. This, this bracelet uses some kind of weird uh, spring bar holding uh, machine. I mean, a spring bar is holding the the links together. I can't show you, but this is pretty much it. You can see here. You don't have like indications of arrows from where to place the spring bar tool here, which shows, which kind of gives you a hint that things are gonna be quite fucky. Now I tried to do it myself and I couldn't. Now I'm not in the best of conditions right now, so maybe that's like I give myself a pass about it. But it was pretty much pretty shitty, I must say. Um, but a friend of mine who is like very good with watches and like small things and with his hands and no, not in that kind of way, but in a way of fixing little things and uh, servicing movement sometimes and so on and so forth. He just came, uh, he, he took like three minutes and um, that's it. 
Now let's look at the, you can see that the, the crystal is a little bit, just a tad, tad little bit um, uh, over the bezel, uh, over the bezel, bezel insert, the bezel. Uh, which is a little bit dome, but I mean very 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 lightly very gently, which I really love which really adds to the whole vintage uh, magic and What can I say? I mean this is a, like a vintage inspired homage to the Seamaster 165 uh, 0.024, whatever you want to call it The date adds a lot for functionality um, Let me show you the loom the loom, the loom, the loom. So let's like let's slide this baby up. So as you can see, boom. As my friend Ariel used to say, boom. This is quite quite impressive. The bezel uh, is loomed as well as of course the dial. Uh, very strong, lasts all night. Um, overall, a, an amazing watch if you like this type of watches. If you like the old Seamaster and you cannot get it, uh, I don't see why anyone would not get it if you are into divers and vintage divers. Me personally, I have a weak spot for vintage inspired divers, and this one hits the spot in every each and every way. Um, also, ah, uh, the ETA, the ETA movement is so, so accurate for me. It's like, mm, doesn't gain or doesn't lose anything per day if I wear it, which is quite uh, fucking impressive, I would say. So, <coughs> sorry. That's it. That's my uh, initial impressions. Maybe you can call it even a review because I don't have much else to say about this watch. Um, let me know if you have any question, any feedback. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, tell your very nice friends about my channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.